Alrighty, we're gonna have ourselves a little uh, history, background lesson, kind of whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it's on where I started uh, started farming and when I started farming uh, by, by myself. Um, we put alfalfa in in 2000 uh, on my windows are dirty on this circle and that circle and there's a hundred acres before then uh, it, this farm was row water farmed uh, and so we put the pivots in my dad put the pivots in and we started uh, started doing that in about and we would plant these corners I, I don't ever remember my dad planting these corners uh, so we have is this area between these two circles there's another one on the other side and then there's a little bitty one up there maybe an acre or two I don't even know how big it is but in I think 2004 is when it was um, yeah it's probably 2004 I was 14 at the time, uh, you know, I've been, been helping my dad, uh, cut hay and rake hay and all that stuff, and I'd been around it since I was really young, but he, uh, he asked me if I wanted to farm these corners. You know, I'd run equipment pretty much all my life, but I, I'd run equipment for a long time, and so I said, okay. And I don't know exactly how much there is. I'm gonna turn around. Okay, I gotta turn around. I'm just doing this. Um, and so I said, "Sure, I'll do it." I, you know, I, I didn't have. I had cows, but I didn't really have. Uh, you know, I had cows with my parents, but I, I didn't really have. You know calves that I bought and raised into cows and stuff like that at the time. So I just said, you know, I'll, I'll do it. And I had a little, uh, like 10 foot, they, they call them, they just call them hamies. Uh, it's 10 foot chisel, that's what it was, chisel plow. And a little 12 foot disc. And the 5510. And that's what I did. And I know this field hadn't been farmed for a long time because when I was chiseling it, the sunflowers were super, super tall. The old dead sunflowers, and they were, they were balling up in the chisel and all that, all that junk. And I think, I think I, I got, you know, this fence wasn't curved like it is now. I think I got maybe, you know, five passes away, and I decided, yeah, I'm gonna have to disc it down first. And to be honest with you, our disc never had a edge on it ever, so it didn't cut in the ground. And yeah, that's that's just where it was. So I I dissed them down. I planted this field. I planted that field, and I planted that field. And I I don't know whether it's 15 or 20 acres, whatever it is. But I planted hay grazer. Hay grazer at the time was ten dollars a bag for a 50 pound bag. And I, it was like 400 bucks or some crap. And I don't remember if I if I paid for the seed or my dad paid for the seed. I just don't remember. I wish I did, but um, I got it planted and used a drill and planted it. Uh, and I, you know, was working. I was actually, when I was doing it, was uh, was after school. It was in May. It was very end of May. And I remember this because I was, I was in eighth grade. And my, uh, teacher is saying something uh, I think we still had spelling tests then and I didn't it had something to do with English or something and I didn't do it and I just completely forgot about it and I got home and I, I came down here and farmed uh, actually we didn't live I didn't live here I lived uh, about three miles three and a half miles down the road and uh you know, she asked me, it's like, well, why, why didn't you do this? Well, I'm, I'm farming. I've got my own farm ground now. So I'm growing, growing feed. Whatever, something like that. But the, the feed came up. 
and then we had a real dry spot, and it started looking bad. And, uh, you know, it was only like a foot, two foot tall at the time, lots of weeds, and it just didn't look like it was going to make anything. So about a month later, you know, or something like that, it started raining again, and this stuff got tall. It got really tall. You know, dry land hay raiser, here you only plant 10 pounds the acre at the most, and it got tall. So, and so did the sunflowers, you know. The stalks on the sunflowers were huge. Um, about September, we were ready, you know, it was, it was time to cut. Well, it was all, you know, had seed heads, everything. It was looking fantastic. And that's probably what bit me, you know, first year. It was a great year. I cut it. Uh, I had my, I still have the swath here. It's a 6550. Oh, I killed a snake right there. Oh, you can't see it. Uh, 6550 Heston. It's the swath here that we had bought several years before for cutting this alfalfa that we put in. And I was well versed in running the swath here. Um, and it took forever to cut this. Uh, my dad had gone around this field once, and I remember I was just, it's before it had really started kicking off growing, and I don't know why, I was kind of upset, you know, why'd you cut it down, and it, had, it hasn't even had a chance to grow yet, something like that, but nevertheless, uh, it, it was growing, and so I started cutting it down, you know, the stuff was probably 10 foot tall, it, it was tall, really tall. I can remember in that, that swather just seeing the, seeing the tops of it from where I was sitting. And I mentioned the sunflowers because if you ever cut sunflowers with an old sickle machine, they get so hard they'll break the guards and they'll break sickles. And I was well versed in the swather enough at the time that I knew how to pull the sickles out and replace the guards. So I got to do all that, and then, then I bailed it. Um, we had uh, a 450 RS 451 round baler, which it's a Heston baler, but it had case paint on it. Um, manual tie. It wasn't auto tie, so you had to run the tie arm across with your hydraulics and do all that. I run that thing quite a bit before, so when want anything new to me uh, but I got like 40 40 some odd bales and that was just unheard of you know I was that was ridiculous and uh, it's just only like when you figure it out it's only a, like a bale to the acre uh, of five by six bales but it, it was awesome you know for dry land that's that's pretty good uh, and I, I did that. I got my got my 40 bales, and then uh, oh, at that time I, I was I put up the hay, and for some reason my grandmother called my dad. We don't we never spoke to each other. Like my family really bad family history. Like it just wasn't her. She called and said, "Hey, you need to have Will come down here. He needs to buy my calves off my cows." And she gave me, uh, she said he can use the little barn pasture for him, which is 160 acres. So I had all this hay, and then I, uh, I went and gave her a fair price, uh, bought the calves off the cows. And then it, it just it just downward spiraled from there and you know we started started 15 acres and now now I've got over 500 acres of ground uh, that I'm farming and it, it's just it really it really kind of took off so I guess you know the the big thing about this story is is you got to start somewhere and I started somewhere. A lot of these young guys, you got to start somewhere too. Now, maybe uh, maybe people will say that, oh, you know, you had things given to you. All right, I got to use the equipment that year. Uh, 
but I also farmed for my dad. You know, I also worked for him. Uh, I did get the grass that year. But I also ended up buying that ranch uh, many years down the road. And so, you know, it, it was kind of a, a planned out thing. I guess, you know, not, not between my dad and my grandmother, because they, no, there was no, it was, like, our jaws hit the floor when she called and said, hey, you need to do this, it, but I, I think she knew, she knew what was eventually going to happen, and that, that's where it, it kind of led to, and that's how, that's how I started farming on my own. Now, the following year, I, I grew a hay again, and I, I irrigated like a five acre patch of it uh, because there was, this all used to be flood watered and in that little patch there were some underground risers. I irrigated that, that part, but it wasn't a good year. I only got maybe 20 bales. And by then I had saved heifers. But no, no, I hadn't saved, I sold everything that year, uh, the first year. The second year I bought the calves again and started saving heifers. So I started saving heifers, you know, year later and I started and then uh then my other grandparent in Oklahoma they had some ground and I went and built all the fences uh had to rebuild all the fences and then I took the heifers that I was saving and, and putting over there and that's where that started I had somewhere to go with them and then we moved them back part of it is there uh, then we moved them back here in, in the winter time. So I did have help. I had help along the way. Um, but at the same point, is I guess it was kind of getting me to where I could, you know, I, I had a jumping off point because it's been very, very expensive since then. And I, I probably could have just kept doing the, the little piddly stuff, but I, I just kept growing and pushing what I was doing and trying to get his, you know, just, just growing my operation. And to where now it's, you know, there's uh, 220 plus acres under irrigation and 300 plus acres of dry land and, you know, countless cows and a feed yard and all this and it really in a short amount of time. And I'm paying for my my ground, and I'm paying for my equipment, and I'm paying for my cattle. Uh, and, you know, hopefully in the next uh, few years, I'll have a lot of the equipment paid off, and some of the cows paid off, and, and things will start being a, a little bit easier. I know I'll keep continuing to expand, but... Uh, It'll give a little more breathing room on being able to uh, to push the expansion. Because right now, I mean, it's 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 not easy because everything nothing's paid for. Uh, I, I would have had, and when I bought my ranch, I would have had my cows paid for uh, probably whew, a couple years ago, but because of the drought. The cows that I bought from the ranch when I bought it, you know, they had to leave, and and then there was they were never going to work out with what had happened, and, and I I sold them and I had to, but I keep having to make my payments, so I had to buy cows back, and it, you know it was kind of it's a tough cycle to be in, but that's uh, that's where that's at, but that that's kind of where I started. This got a little off track from from anything but uh, I was just working this field up here and I just remember chiseling this field and it taking so long it took so long to do everything you know you know it was 15 20 acres but I didn't have big equipment at all and now I, now I'm sitting and what kind of really got me laughing I was in that field and I had to take my crumbler off my disc because it's just too long for that little itty bitty field over there. But that one always produced a lot of feed. Um, but I just kind of got, I was just kind of smiling about it because I, I, I've come a long ways and it's been really hard. But 
you know, you kind of think about it, and well, it gives you a, it gives you butterflies or hope or inspiration or whatever. But I get some young people every once in a while who ask me, you know, how do I do it? How do I start? Sometimes it's good to remember how you started, you know, where you came from, and that's how I did it. That's, you know, I, I got started, and of course, maybe maybe I had a hand up in it because uh, I had already had experience farming, and running equipment, and had the equipment to use. Uh, but I, I think a person, you know, I see guys going and buying old equipment where it's not costing them that much. Well, that would have been very, I was using all my implements were from the 60s. You know, they were, they were old, so they, they weren't going to cost anything. You know, the tractor's what costs the money, but, you know, you can you can work your ways around that, and you can start somewhere. Uh, you know, I had, I had a huge, huge advantage of the ground, I guess I should say. Uh, but I'm also the only one who's uh, the only young person with several, several miles around who's even who's even in agriculture anymore. So you know, there's I know there's lots of situations like that. If you're just tough enough, you can probably probably figure it out. There's hope, I guess. If anything, you, you got to have a little little hope. But I'll leave you with that. I'm uh, I'm just prepping my my dry land ground here for uh, for wheat. I only got wheat standing here. It's it'll probably some of it will probably come up, but I'm prepping it. We've had some rain. We're supposed to have some more rain. I'm gonna get some dry land planted. So I'll leave you at that and and uh, just keep on trucking, I guess. But leave your comments.